So I am beyond excited to interview, today, interview today's guest, Dr. Isabella Wentz. If you have Hashimoto's, then there's a very good chance that you've heard of Dr. Isabella, but just in case you haven't, I'm going to dive into her bio. So Dr. Isabella Wentz is a compassionate, innovative, solution-focused, integrative pharmacist dedicated to finding the root causes of chronic health conditions. Her passion stems from her own diagnosis with Hashimoto's thyroiditis in 2009, following a decade of debilitating symptoms. She is a New York Times bestselling author of three books on Hashimoto's, and her newest book focuses on adrenal health. And the name of the book is The Adrenal Transformation Protocol, a four-week plan to release stress symptoms and go from surviving to thriving. And thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Isabella. Thank you so much for having me. It's such an honor to be here with you, and it's so great to see you again. Yeah, I agree. So great to catch up and to chat with you about adrenal. So, you know, we, um, as we were talking prior to the recording, you know, years ago, we swapped interviews and we were talking, of course, focusing on, on thyroid and, you know, we'll, we'll integrate thyroid into today's talk as well, but really going to do a deep dive into adrenals. And so people know about your background with Hashimoto's. But can you, I guess if you could maybe elaborate a little bit more and then just tie in your experience with the adrenals and why you decided to write the book, The Adrenal Transformation Pro Protocol. Sure, of course. So I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's in my 20s after almost a decade of some um, debilitating symptoms. And I was never really interested in the thyroid gland during pharmacy school, anything like that, or thyroid medications. I just thought they were boring, right? Um, and then I really came to appreciate the condition and all of that was going on with Hashimoto's when I was diagnosed myself and I started taking thyroid meds and I felt a little bit better, but not fully better. And I realized that there was a lot of dysfunctional patterns that were in my body. Some of them were causing me to have Hashimoto's. Other parts of that were like consequences of having hypothyroidism for a while or were worsened by, um, by the hypothyroidism. And I wanted to figure out if there was anything I could do to like make myself feel better and feel human again. So I really focused on looking at the research and patient forums and trying to figure out if I could find out a plan to get myself better. And, and then I did thankfully. Right. And so I then wrote a book about it in 2013 called Hashimoto's the root cause. And throughout that process, what part of what was really um, fundamental to my healing journey was changing my nutrition. So going gluten-free and dairy-free helped me tremendously. So I was able to eliminate the acid reflux, the joint pain, carpal tunnel, and IBS that I had had for many, many years prior that, you know, was barely responding to medications. Um, and this resolved like the acid reflux and the IBS and bloating within three days. So I was like, holy cow. But then I still struggled with brain fog fatigue, especially morning fatigue. I was kind of a night owl where I had a hard time falling asleep at night. I felt anxious and wired, but tired throughout the day. I was always wearing like sunglasses um, and just kind of would like step outside. And I was like, man, I feel like a vampire, right? Being outside. I'm like with these bright lights, I would, um, I had seasonal affective disorder. I would, if I would stand up too quickly, I would feel faint. Um, just always kind of startled and always anxious and just in that fight or flight state. And somebody brought up adrenal fatigue to me and I was like, okay, that's interesting. What are their adrenals? And like, well, what's going on? And I go to Google it. And this was, you know, 10 plus years ago. And some reputable medical site said adrenal fatigue doesn't exist. It's a quack diagnosis, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you know, skeptical pharmacist. Oh my gosh, not going to go down that road because that's a fake thing. Right. And then Finally, like it probably took like the 15th person who happened to be my local compounding pharmacist, um, Mr. Carter Black. And he said to me, hey, you know, have you looked into adrenal fatigue? And I, I don't know, maybe I just had a moment of weakness when I was like, OK, fine, I will like I will look at that. And then sure enough, I had all the symptoms and I tried the recommendations and holy cow, I got better. And um, I talk about adrenals 
in my Hashimoto's book, in all of my work on Hashimoto's, that's part of the healing plan is to support the health of your adrenals. I have worked with, um, you know, thousands of people with Hashimoto's and hypothyroidism at this point, and 90% of them have some degree of adrenal dysfunction when I've tested their levels. And I had a pretty straightforward protocol for the adrenals. Um, I thought it was straightforward and made a lot of sense that helped me get better that I was trained in through functional medicine. Um, but then this all kind of like came to a big, I guess, moment when I was a new mom of an eight month old baby who was still waking up a lot throughout the night and needed to eat at night. And I was like his main source of food. Um, and so I found myself like my adrenals were flat, like really dysfunctional again, but I couldn't utilize like the hormones that I had normally would have recommended for others. Cause I was nursing and I didn't feel comfortable taking a lot of supplements and I didn't feel comfortable. Um, uh, like I wasn't gonna like sleep. Like that was one of the big things people recommend to heal adrenals is sleep a lot. And I'm like, yes, but I'm not sleeping. So I need something else. And people also recommend cutting out coffee. And I was like, but coffee is the reason I function during the day. Right. So I had to come up with a new way to heal and resolve brain fog, resolve energy issues and the sleep issues and, and all of the things and for myself. And then I being like a guinea pig, I released it out to my community and it's now helped over 3,500 people like resolve all these symptoms in just three to four weeks. So that's how I, you know, I, that's how I came to talk about adrenals. I'm not changing my name to like the adrenal pharmacist or anything, but the adrenals addressing that adrenal dysfunction is a key component to healing when you have thyroid issues. Yeah, I agree. I mean, when I dealt with Graves, I, stress and adrenal issues definitely played a played a role in the development of my condition. And just over the years, I, I've, I've worked with both hyperthyroidism, Hashimoto's, but as you know, my I have more of a focus on those with hyperthyroidism, Graves disease. And so just like you see most people with Hashimoto's having adrenal problems, I would say the same thing with, with those with hyperthyroidism, Graves disease. And it's even in the literature, if you do some research, well, I wouldn't say adrenals in the literature with Graves, but stress, <laughs> stress yep. and Graves, there's a number of journal articles. And obviously if someone's dealing with chronic stress, it's almost definitely going to affect the adrenals. So yeah, your, your book, your protocol is definitely well needed. And so let's talk about why many people have compromised adrenals. I mentioned the chronic stress. And so I'm guessing that's, that's a big reason why a lot of people have adrenal imbalances. Yeah, absolutely. So current stressors can cause a whole host of issues. And I typically will ask people that I work with, what was going on in your life before you got sick? And most of them will say something very stressful was happening in their lives, right? And so maybe they were going through a divorce. Maybe there was a death in the family. Maybe they were um, fired from a job or they had a major, major um, terrible life change, right? Um, there was a study that was super interesting talking about a woman who was thrown down the stairs and developed Graves disease shortly thereafter because of that traumatic, stressful experience that she had had. Um, and so this is like a big connection for a lot of people. Something really bad happens that overwhelms your ability to like cope and handle it. Right. Um, then there's also like good stressors. So you have a baby yes, bundle of joy, but yes, it's stressful for your body, right? Um, it's the, the growing a baby is like takes up nutrients and then like the life change is big and not sleeping and being nutrient depleted. Um, that is, that is a really happy life change for a lot of people, but also stressful getting married, getting a new job, getting a job promotion, going to graduate school, all of these things can be incredibly stressful. We were, we were just talking about the medical profession, right? How many, um, how many times doctors have to do like, you know, 80 plus hour weeks at the hospital and, you know, going even before residency, before all of that, I know I personally had to do oh, like two or three exams every week when I had to wake up at 5 a.m. and get to those exams and loved going to graduate school. But I wouldn't say like that it wasn't stressful because it was stressful, right? 
um, all the deadlines and all that pressure um, that you can have from from creating very positive positive change in your life from from you know the personal growth that you can experience from starting a new business for starting a family moving across the country or going to graduate school um, then there's also stressors that happened to us a long time ago that we may not even remember so history of childhood trauma something happened when you were three you may not even have a clear recollection of it but it stayed with you right and so it's like this unprocessed stress that can also be present in our bodies um, and lead to like low levels of inflammation there's a ton of studies that have connected that childhood trauma to like autoimmunity later on in our adult life then we have uh, physical stressors so things that are in our lifestyle so sleep deprivation like one of the fastest ways to really wreck your adrenals is like if you don't get sleep i've been there done that i you know i've written the book right um so this is this is a really key component of of you know getting back into balance is making sure if that's an issue for you you need to address that then we have things like over exercising we have things like under eating we have things like being nutritionally deficient having blood sugar imbalances right some of these um habits of like hustling like right you you have your job and then you have your side hustle and then you have your side side hustle and and all of that like that can be incredibly draining on a person um and then there's like some of these stressors that i feel like unless you're working in functional medicine or with a functional medicine doc like yourself you're not even aware that it, they're present. So these could be like infections like H. pylori, right? Such an important trigger for Hashimoto's and Graves and for all kinds of um, digestive issues. And this is leading to inflammation and stress in your body. Um, and then there's, you know, protozoal parasites that can be an issue for some people. Then there's toxic exposures, like people don't even know they might be exposed to mold or they might be exposed to another type of toxin that is sending these stress signals to the body. So really anything that kind of overwhelms our ability to cope is going to be what I consider a stressor and can get us into that adrenal uh, dysfunction state where we're stuck in that stress response rather than, you know, kind of like going through a stressful time, shaking it off, and then you move on with your life and, and you feel good again and you feel normal, you kind of get stuck in that like fight or flight mode and your body's not really repairing itself. And then you end up having really low levels of energy, fatigue, anxiety, sleep issues, all the things, right? Yeah, I agree. And thank you for sharing all those uh, different factors I could lead to adrenal dysfunction. And, and one that resonates with me is the over-exercising because that was also me prior to my Graves' disease diagnosis. I mean, the emotional stress definitely played a factor in my adrenal imbalances, but I was overtraining, which I, sh with my background, I should have known better, but I, I didn't. And, you know, looking back, that was, I, I think, a, a big tax on my adrenals. So I'm glad you mentioned that. And you're correct about really, you know, everything you said, the, the, the infections potentially could, you know, be a factor when it comes to adrenals, the, our, we live in a toxic world. So we uh, tend to over, overlook the impact that these toxins have on our adrenals. I mean, as well as other areas of the body. So now you mentioned when, so when you dealt with Hashimoto's, you felt like, you, you know, like you had some of the classic symptoms, you know, of, having compromised adrenals. And so when it comes to finding out whether someone has an adrenal imbalance, um, do you, are, like, would you recommend just like relying more on symptoms or do you recommend testing or a combination of both? Or like, what, how, how do, how, I guess, but the question I'm asking, how does someone know if they have an adrenal imbalance, if they have adrenal dysfunction? So I personally love testing. Like if I could have my little way, I would have everybody take like every single test <laughs> and be like, okay, let's collect all this data. And, you know, I, I forced my husband and my son to do all kinds of tests. Like we do stool tests. We do, you know, we don't do a lot of blood tests with my son because 
you know, he's little, but I'm like, Ooh, let's test your urine. Let's test your stool. Let's test this and let's see what's going on in your body and how we can optimize it. So I think that testing can be incredibly helpful to figure out if you have adrenal dysfunction. I have, I love the ZRT adrenal saliva test. I love the Dutch urine test. Um, and also like for the 10 years that I've been talking about people getting tested, one, people oftentimes will go to their endocrinologist and will be like, I think I have adrenal issues. Can you test me? They test them for Addison's and they're like, you don't have adrenal issues because there's a disconnect between like the integrative functional natural medicine and conventional medicine where conventional medicine doesn't recognize this adrenal dysfunction as like a real thing. Right. So they're not testing for it. And so people are kind of get the runaround from their conventional docs. So then I'll be like, no, you need to find an integrative doctor. And then the integrative doctor, they'll be like, but they're expensive. I have to pay out of pocket and I have to pay out of pocket for these tests because they're not covered on insurance because they're experimental. And so then that's kind of another barrier to people getting that test and, you know, getting the help that they need. And then another part would be like the doctors, they would, you know, see the doctors, they would get the tests, and then the tests would be sitting at their house for however long, because you have to like get off of caffeine and all of that to like get an accurate test. And they're like, I just, just can't do it. Don't have, don't have the energy to like not have caffeine for a day. Right. Um, and then we get into like, okay, so you got the test results. Great. They took a few weeks to get back or sometimes a few months because the person didn't do the test right away or the lab had a backlog. And then you're like sitting on like, it's been like six months to like few years from the time that like you knew you had these symptoms to like when you get the plan, then you get the plan. And for whatever reason, like you react to like the hormones, right? Or you react to something and you can't, you can't comply with the plan. Part of like, part of like the traditional plan is like get off of caffeine and get lots of sleep and then take hormones and take glandulars. And some people like, they're like, I took glandulars and I had palpitations or, you know, the hormones give me back knee or I am like now estrogen dominant because I took too much of the hormones or there's no way you're taking my coffee out of my like cold dead hands. Like I'm just not going to do it. Right. Um, and so there's a lot of barriers to it. So the beauty of my program is that it focuses on symptoms, right? So I'm like, if you have these symptoms, there's a chance that your adrenal stress response is off. And here's the good news. Let's rewire that stress response so that you feel good. And I don't necessarily focus on adrenal testing throughout the program. That's not a requirement for you to feel. So I hope that eliminates kind of the barrier for people to, to feeling better. People can absolutely do tests and there will be incredibly helpful if they're working with a practitioner. But I just like, kind of want to like eliminate that one barrier because there are so many people that are suffering, but they don't have like the ability to, you know, have access to these things. Right. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I, I've been using saliva testing in my practice to look at the circadian rhythm of cortisol. And then you mentioned the, the dried urine testing, the Dutch testing. I, I also like that test, but, but you're right. There are some people who either they can't afford to do the test or they can't afford it, but it sits on their shelf for a few months before they send the test test in. So it's nice to know that there's a way where they could just read your book and then just look at all the different symptoms and then kind of evaluate and, you know, get a good idea if they have, you know, an adrenal problem just by, again, just by looking at the book and, you know, trying to bypass the testing. And then of course, I agree, if you go to a conventional doctor, they're absolutely not going to do anything unless if you have Addison's or Cushing syndrome, they're just going to do, you know, typically blood testing or, you know, ACTH stimulation. But when it comes to looking at circadian rhythm, yeah, they, they won't, they won't go there. But what are your thoughts as far as, so you, you mentioned earlier, uh, like I, I used to all the time use adrenal fatigue, you know, years ago, but now, you know, it kind of gets a bad rap adrenal fatigue. And now, you know, they talk about, well, it's not really adrenal fatigue. It's like dysregulation of the you know, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, the HB axis dysregulation. Obviously, we're going back and forth. We're not saying adrenal fatigue, but we're saying adrenal dysfunction. But what, what are your thoughts uh, as far as adrenal fatigue, if adrenal fatigue really does exist, or if it's just a term that was used in the past, and now it really is adrenal dysfunction adren or that HBA axis dysregulation? So I think adrenal fatigue has been like canceled, right? Is that, <laughs> is that what happened? 
Um, you know, when I was trained in functional medicine, I understood it, this was, you know, a little bit over 10 years ago, I understood adrenal fatigue as you are fatigued because your adrenals are not functioning properly and because your HPA axis, which is your hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, right? Um, there's a disconnect there. So your adrenals are capable of making the right amount of hormones at the right time, but they're not doing it. And so we need to like reconnect that wiring between your brain and your adrenals. I'm like pointing over here. Um, whereas when I now understand that the original definition and intent of like the the term adrenal fatigue meant like the adrenals were were actually fatigued and unable to like produce uh adrenal hormones like that's what people used to think back in the day um and so now there's like i know it like the endocrinologists are like adrenal fatigue doesn't exist only addison's is a thing we test these people and they don't have you know their body is capable of producing cortisol. And I do agree with that, that um, in people with this HPA axis dysregulation, they can produce cortisol at the right amount, in the right amounts, the right time of day, but their body's just not doing it. Um, and then when like, you know, I just kind of like scratch my head because doctors will say like adrenal fatigue doesn't exist. And then they'll call it like HPA axis dysregulation <laughs> or, um, where that doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue, but that is kind of like where all of the evidence base is. So if you do a search on PubMed with it, which is like the largest database of medical journals, you'll be able to find HPA axis dysfunction, but it doesn't necessarily roll off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> so um, I call it adrenal dysfunction. And really the symptoms of adrenal dysfunction are the same as the symptoms of adrenal fatigue, the same symptoms of burnout, it is all kind of how the body responds to stress. They're not the same as Addison's. Addison's, um, you would have all of the symptoms that of like adrenal fatigue and then some if you had Addison's. Addison's is, you know, a different kind of condition just happens to be tied in with our stress hormones, right? So I hope that kind of clarifies it. It's kind of one of those things where I feel like 10 years ago, people are like, leaky gut doesn't exist, but then you would like search for intestinal permeability <laughs> and there's all this like research behind it. So like for a while, I just never said leaky gut. I just always said intestinal permeability and people were like, oh, okay, okay. And if I said leaky gut, they'd be like, quack, <laughs> you're not, you don't know what you're talking about. And so same thing now, like you have to apparently say adrenal dysfunction, um, even though we all know that, um, you know, it's, it's the same as adrenal fatigue. It's the same as burnout. Right. And what our body does when it's stressed for prolonged periods of time, that's how it adapts to stress. Right. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, definitely easier to say adrenal fatigue or adrenal dysfunction than HPA axis dysregulation. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Isabella for clarifying that. And so can we get into your adrenal transformation protocol, get into the different components? Absolutely. So I really focus on figuring out why your body is in this fight or flight mode, right? And what are kind of the signals that you're sending to your body that's telling you that you're in danger right now, right? And so things like sleep deprivation, over-exercising, what are, um, and under eating, right? So these three things, which are kind of part of like modern culture of like, lose weight and exercise and like burn the bridge at both ends, right? This is oftentimes like if you were thinking of like caveman, cave woman times, the cave women would be like, if they were doing this or cave men, they would be like, okay, I'm Eve, I'm not eating enough because there's a famine. I'm over exercising because I'm being chased by bears and I'm keeping watch because there's probably a war or some, some tribe trying to attack me. That's why I'm not sleeping at night. And so they would get like shifted into this alert, high alert, like fight or flight response. And there's things that we're doing in our modern life that are, that are kind of doing the same because we have our ancient genes and our ancient wiring that isn't necessarily tuned into like, you know, there's an abundance of food and, you know, I'm not in an immediate threat situation right now. And, you know, I'm not sleeping because there are deadlines, right? Like, and so our body shifts into this survival state, right? And so part of what I do is I focus on what are the safety signals we can send your body in a language that it understands that we are safe 
And we do not need to be in that like survival mode and just how to shift the body into thriving. So when we're in that survival mode, our body's not repairing itself. Our body is essentially breaking itself down, right? Um, and that can be very problematic when you have antibodies because it's not balancing the immune system. It's not balancing the inflammation. It's not repairing itself. And so we want to shift into that repair mode. And what I focus on is, you know, like replenishing, right? So first we focus on replenishing any kind of nutrients. We focus on micronutrients. We focus like B vitamins, vitamin C are incredibly helpful when people have been under stress for a long time, as is magnesium and electrolytes that kind of helps us come back from like all that stress, right? And then we focus on making sure we get enough protein and fat. Part of what's happening with um, the adrenal dysfunction is we're utilizing a we're utilizing amino acids to kind of fuel the stress response. And amino acids are sort of like what our body, the little bricks our body uses to fix itself. And so by, by eating more protein, we're getting more amino acids into our system, right? Because protein is made up of amino acids. And that's, that's a big part of the beginning part of the program is you focus on nutrition safety signals. So nutrient dense foods, eating, not starving yourself, eating frequently every two to three hours for some people to start yourself that way. Um, and then we go through additional safety signals, which focus on re-energizing. And part of that is you get connected with the circadian rhythm, right? So you figure out how to give your body more energy throughout the day and less energy at nighttime so you could sleep and replenish and really heal and save your body another part of that safety signal. Then we get into revitalizing and this has probably been a favorite part and a little bit of what makes my book a bit unique from um, some of the other things is we really focus on pleasurable activities that tell us that it's safe. So we focus on things like, you know, a lot of us have a lot of goals. And if you're an ambitious person, you're just like, sometimes it feels like you're just knocking things off of your to-do list. And then you've got your family and you've got your work and you've got like your parents to take care of that are maybe getting older and all these like adult responsibilities where um, that can kind of make us put, shift us into that survival fight or flight mode and just taking some time throughout our day to focus on pleasurable activities. So I don't know, maybe you like painting and that brings you a lot of joy, but you haven't done that for a long time. Or maybe, maybe scrapbooking is your thing, just like putting out a bunch of stuff on the floor and making some cute scrapbooks. Maybe that brings you a sense of joy, but you haven't done it for 10 years because you've been you know, on this stress roller coaster, you take the time and you, you know, I give people a prescription for pleasure to just do the things you love and enjoy. And that is like such a powerful way for them to just shift all that out of that survival mode into more of a thriving state. And then we also focus on rebuilding resilience, which is really um, figuring out like what weighs you down and how to get rid of those things. A lot of times it's past trauma. We focus on giving people trigger tools so if there's things that are really sent, setting off your fight or flight response, like, um, you know, annoying people <laughs> being one example, um, then you would focus on that. You know, like, what do you do if somebody really drives you nuts and annoys you? Like, here's a list of things. Um, here's a list of ideas and let's develop a trigger toolkit. So you don't, you don't get into that, like really, um, really angry, like, um, survival state, right? Really triggered state. And, and you figure out how to, how to work with that. And then we focus on, um, you know, how to build up your body and how to, how to, how to just basically be more resilient to stress. So even though we all have stress in our lives, you can't always get rid of it, but being able to cope with it and having, letting, letting it kind of like bounce off of us rather than like absorb into our system and overwhelm us. All right. Well, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing those. And so I want to talk a little bit about replenish because we're in a, in this day and age, intermittent fasting is, is popular. And I mean, I'll admit I, I do some intermittent fasting these days, but for example, when I dealt with hyperthyroidism, I wouldn't have wanted to do intermittent fasting for a few reasons. One, I was losing tons of weight due to the hyperthyroidism. You know, I lost 42 pounds. So I definitely was not thinking about intermittent fasting back then. Um, and a big reason is also now you see it all over the place back then. And, you know, 2008, 2009, it wasn't as popular. But I 
I also mentioned like how someone has compromised adrenals, you do want to be cautious about intermittent fasting. And it sounds like we're on the same page with that. You know, you're talking about the replenish and making sure you're not under eating. So can you talk a little bit more about that as well? Of course. Um, and I've had a lot of ladies go through my program that are struggling with weight issues. So their goal is to lose weight, right? Um, and so they're restricting calories, they're trying intermittent fasting, they're trying things like the keto diet, they're doing lots of exercise, they're doing all these things that are supposed to help them lose weight. And I will say these things work really well if you're a 20 year old fitness <laughs> guru, right? Like they work so well, right? And you can get a six pack that way. But if you have um, dysfunction in your stress response, and if you have dysfunction in your thyroid, then these things can actually backfire. So people with, um, with um, adrenal issues, typically um, people with flatlined adrenals, what I call where they have this like flatlined adrenal curve where they just don't produce enough cortisol throughout the day, like stressful things are going to overwhelm them. So like doing things like cardio, which is supposed to be really great for most people, right? When it's balanced with proper um, anabolic exercise, like lifting weights, they're going to do that and they're going to be exhausted. And they're like, everybody said I was going to do more that I needed. If I wanted more energy, I should do more exercising. And they're like, this did not work for me. Right. Or they'll, they'll heal things like skip breakfast. Right. But their body is like, um, part of the whole presentation is you're going to have blood sugar swings. And so skipping that breakfast and that fasting can actually make you feel worse and you can crash. Right. Um, your body's like, oh no, we're in a famine. Um, and rather than your like when you have a really balanced response and, you know, at, like you said, at this point you can do fasting because you've worked so much on your health and I can do fasting and I can do aerobic exercise. I could do all the things, but when I was trying to heal my adrenals and even when I was, you know, um, a few years ago when I was a new mom and I was sleep deprived, a lot of these things were stressors and that we're shifting, shifting my, my scale of like, um, you know, like you have this, like you're thriving here or you're, um, surviving here. And depending on how many things you put on each side of the scale, your body's going to shift that way. So if you're, if you're a new mom that's sleep deprived, you already have that stressor. So you want to counteract with eating lots of great foods, right? If you have inflammation, autoimmunity in your body, that's very present right now, that's a big stressor. So we're going to want to like reduce that stressor and send more safety signals. It's like, I always, I'm like, I think it's like simple math. Like you put a little bit of weight on here and you put a, you know, you can, you can do that. So if you're, if you're overall in a really good, healthy state and balanced state, doing a little bit of stressor, like the intermittent fasting can be like, you know, game changing. But if you're already like have too much stress on your plate, that's going to just cause you further issues. That's been my experience as, as well as yours. For people with um, adrenal dysfunction. And, and that's like one of the things I'm trying to raise awareness about for people who like beat themselves up where they're like, well, I must not be exercising enough or I, might, I must not be fasting enough. Why is everybody else getting results and I'm not, right? Yeah, I mean, that's true. I mean, adrenal imbalances could also be a factor when someone's trying to lose weight. And if they're doing everything from a dietary standpoint, they're exercising regularly. And, and, and like you said, it could backfire because if they're doing those things, you know, that I, I, we both mentioned the intermittent fasting, but then, yeah, getting back to the exercise, you know, the even simple cardio sometimes, but especially these days also, you see a lot of high intensity interval training. So someone might be doing, you know, the high intensity, high intensity interval training along with the intermittent fasting. And that's just constantly, that's continuously taxing their adrenals which could make it even more difficult to, to lose weight. So you're right. It's, uh, you know, it becomes kind of a vicious cycle. It, it does. And I've, I've had so many women that were so reluctant to like take my advice of like eating more calories and doing less exercise because they were like trying to lose weight. And, and it's kind of like, well, is it working? And a lot of times they'd be like, no, I'm like gaining weight. I do all this exercise and whatever. And it's like further suppressing their metabolism because they're getting stressed. And so part of the plan is you eat more protein and you get more, um, you know, nutrients and you focus on de-stressing your body. Right. And we have had, um, we have had people that have started the program underweight 
And we have had people that have started the program overweight. And the beauty about like adrenals is if your weight issues are caused by adrenal issues, you know, de-stressing is going to help you get to a healthier weight. So we've had 80% of the people that were like trying to lose weight. They're like, oh, you know what? I did lose like five to 10 pounds on this plan. Right. Um, and, you know, five to 10 pounds is like a healthy um, level, healthy amount of weight to lose over four weeks, four to six weeks. Um, you know, you don't want to lose like 40 pounds in a week or anything like that. Right. And then the people who were like, I'm not, I'm not like I'm wasting away. I'm muscle wasting. Um, we help them shift into gaining more weight. Um, one of the things that I utilize throughout the program is carnitine because people with thyroid issues often get into this state where um, they, they're muscle wasting and carnitine can be incredibly helpful for that and for resolving brain fog, for the fatigue, for helping them with blood sugar issues, um, supporting their mitochondria. And so people, people do find that they're, you know, they feel better, right? And then the, like their weights, it like weight isn't a focus on the program, but it tends to normalize as people go through the program. Yeah, do you recommend acetyl L-carnitine or like just regular like L-carnitine tartrate or? I recommend a combination just because um, carnitine, L-carnitine is going to be helpful for like the muscles and then acetyl L-carnitine can be helpful for the brain and to kind of really waken people up with that brain fog. So I find a combination um, of like you take one supplement, it's got both of them in there and the um, L-carnitine has more of L-carnitine, a little bit of acetyl L-carnitine. So you don't want to do too much of the acetyl L-carnitine. And that tends to work really, really well for um, for the brain fog. So 92% of the people in my program, they are like the brain fog has resolved. That's actually one of our biggest um, success symptoms is in the program. So I want to talk more about supplements. But before we do that, the re-energize, and, and you mentioned the circadian rhythm. So how important do you feel it is to get like sun exposure because you know just to get back on track with the circadian rhythm do you recommend like getting morning sun exposure and then you know at night i imagine you tell people to like limit the blue light and other things just to get back on track with their circadian rhythm yeah absolutely i um and i live um I've lived like everywhere, <laughs> but I've lived, well, maybe not everywhere. I've lived in Europe and a lot of uh, many parts of the United States. Right now I live in sunny Austin, Texas, and I was in Los Angeles for a few years. And I was, was also in Chicago, Boulder, Colorado, Poland, and rainy Amsterdam. So, um, so bear with me. I know people like can roll their eyes when they're like, get morning sunshine, you know, step outside, spend time in nature. If you can do this, this can be incredibly game changing, right? If you can get um, sunshine first thing into your eyes when you step outside, that's going to let your body know that it's time to wake up. That will raise your cortisol to healthy levels without needing to like rely on like caffeine to raise your cortisol to, to you know, to wake up. Um, and that also kind of sets the clock for your body so that your body knows that, you know, it it's wakey wakey time now. And in this amount of hours, it's going to be time to unwind and go to sleep. And I know it's not always possible. Like I have lived in Chicago and Amsterdam and Colorado. Um, so sometimes I'll recommend like dawn simulators or um, light therapy boxes. I actually have a list of them throughout the book and the program because people are, people are like, okay, yeah, great. So if you live in like, you know, perfect weather year round, you can do this, but it's really just not realistic for for people living everywhere in the world. So there is a way around that. Even if you, if, even if it's like raining and snowing on your doorstep right now, which sometimes in Colorado, it would be like May, end of May, and there would be snow. And I'd be like, how, how are, is there snow in May? Right. I've seen photos uh, of not just snow, but lots of snow in May. So there's, yes. there's been a few snowstorms in the, the over the last few years. I don't know if last year specifically, but I've seen at least a couple of different years in May where it was completely covered. So uh, so yeah, I'm sure you're glad to be in Austin, Texas, just so you don't get the the May snow. Yes, I miss Colorado. I love Boulder so much, and I miss my I miss all my friends and. Um, we miss Colorado so much, and we are also loving our time in Austin. So my husband's family is here, so we're we're excited to be here with our little one. And I'm 
one of the people that just doesn't mind the heat. So I'm saying that now, ask me again next summer, but, um, but it is nice to have access to like the morning sunshine and nature. Cause that can be really regulating for our circadian rhythm. Yeah. But I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the light therapy boxes because you're right. Like if someone lives also in like Seattle or Portland yeah. where it's rainy a good part of the year. And so they might not be able to get that sun exposure waking up. So yeah, yeah that's, that, that's an excellent idea. So definitely check out her book for some of those resources. You said it's in your book, like you have different resources with the light therapy boxes. And, and I promise we're going to get to the supplements, but before we get to the supplements, ad adrenal supplement, like a supplement you recommend for adrenal health, we can't have this episode with the thyroid pharmacist without talking about thyroid and adrenals. So like what connection have you seen between thyroid adrenals you know, how either way, whether, you know, adrenals affecting thyroid or thyroid affecting adrenals. So absolutely our hormones talk to each other, right? So it's not like we have these individual hormones in a vacuum separated from one another, right? Um, like naughty children <laughs> that, that have to be separated in the back seat. So we have, um, the first thing that can happen, um, is when a person is hypothyroid, when their thyroid is underactive, cortisol will kind of accommodate for that. So when we are low in thyroid hormone, our cortisol clearance decreases so that our body keeps cortisol in our system longer. And typically people will say like, oh, I'm kind of tired, but I'm kind of wired. That wired is coming from that cortisol because it's trying to like help you out and, and trying to, to keep you like alive and like not, not sloth like. Um, and so and so that's kind of part of part of like the feedback loop system. Then as people get onto thyroid medications, then their cortisol clearance increases, right? And so um, this can, you get on thyroid medications, it normalizes your thyroid function, but then your cortisol clearance increases. And then all of a sudden you're left with really low cortisol. This can be unmasked and, you know, in hyperthyroid states as well, then you have increased cortisol clearance. So it, it's kind of a, um, one of those feedback loops that occurs with, with thyroid issues, right? And then we focus on what's happening with people who have too much stress. Off, sometimes they'll have more production of reverse T3, which can block thyroid hormone receptors. And then people aren't able to utilize their, um, their thyroid hormone properly, their active thyroid hormone properly. So, it, so it's a feedback loop system and, and all of that, like for people listening, it's like, you don't have to like memorize this. You're not going to be quizzed on it. <laughs> um, this is like us, you know, kind of talking about like the nerdy things, but the key thing to remember is like, if you have an, a, a thyroid problem, your adrenals have probably been compensating and there's some kind of effect between there's a feedback system. And oftentimes people with thyroid issues, I would say, 90% of the time, and I'm, I'm not sure if that's your experience as well, but 90% of the time with hypothyroidism, we do have to support their adrenals for a person to like get rid of all their symptoms, right? Yeah, I, I definitely agree. And it's interesting, you mentioned cortisol clearance. So I, I don't do dried urine testing on everybody, but it's interesting because they actually look at that. They look at the cortisol metabolism. So you can actually see that if someone you know, has hypothyroidism, typically you'll see not only a lot of times we see cortisol low, not, not all the time. Sometimes you'll see a, a high, some high patterns, but you almost always will see that low, the, the yep. low cortisol metabolites and opposite with Graves. If someone has hyperthyroidism, you'll see on a, a test like the Dutch where the cortisol metabolites are elevated. So exactly what you said, you usually do see that pattern with the, you know, hypothyroidism and then with hyperthyroidism that increased cortisol metabolisms because you're getting the increased cortisol clearance. And then also with elevated cortisol, some there, there's a lot of different factors that could affect the conversion of T4, T3, but also elevated cortisol could also um, affect that, that conversion. And, and one other thing I'll say, this isn't really a connection between adrenals and thyroid directly, but you know, just the impact of chronic stress, chronic stress, of course, affects adrenals, but it also could decrease secretory IgA, which aligns the mucosal surfaces of the body, including the gastrointestinal tract, and make someone more susceptible to infections, for example. It serves as a form of protection. 
which in turn could be a trigger, as you mentioned earlier, with you know talking about H. pylori and parasites. So, so it's not directly affect. Well, the stress is affecting direct, direct. The stress is directly affecting the adrenals, but just that whole connection between stress affecting adrenals and then stress affecting secretory IgA, which can make someone more susceptible to an autoimmune condition such as Graves or Hashimoto's. But, um, but yeah, thank you, thank you for sharing that as well, Dr. Isabella. And um, yeah, so, so supplements. Let's let's talk about some of your favorite supplements. Um, you mentioned the the carnitine, L-carnitine, which is a mixture of the acetyl L-carnitine uh, and the regular L-carnitine, like L-carnitine -tar tartrate. And then um, you did mention earlier B vitamins. You mentioned vitamin C are also some of your favorites, but I'm sure I'm, I'm guessing there. there I, I know there are others like ashwagandha. There's rhodiola. I don't know your thoughts about that. There's licorice root. So I'll, I'll, I'll shut up for a few minutes and I'll have you talk about supplements. So sure. So we already talked about carnitine and it's been traditionally used for people with Graves disease. And, and people used to think that it had antithyroid effects. And now it's also been used successfully in people with hypothyroidism. And what we've I think what we're learning now is it tends to act as more of like a balancing, stabilizing uh, effect with thyroid hormones. So that's been really fabulous for the thyroid fatigue. I, I try not to um, give too many supplements. I try to pick ones that kind of have multiple uses and the carnitine helps with balancing blood sugar, helps with clearing ammonia in the body, um, which can which can cause a lot of the brain fog. It helps with muscle strength. It helps with um, brain health. It helps with helping our metabolism, utilize fatty acids, and just helps with a lot of things, right? So I, I utilize that as part of the protocol. It supports our mitochondria. Then I focus on um, sarcomyces boulardii. So sarcomyces boulardii helps to raise our secretory IgA levels, even when we're stressed. So whatever is kind of living in our gut or like wants to live in there, uh, we have this extra layer of protection. So we talked about like sometimes infections can um, be a trigger or exacerbating factor for thyroid issues um, and some of that like stress response. And this the Saccharomyces boulardii can help you clear out the infections naturally, like whether it's candida or mold or some parasites or H. pylori. Sometimes it just the Saccharomyces boulardii can do that on its own. Other times you might need like deeper protocols, right? Especially with like H. pylori because um, that um, pathogen tends to be notorious and can make biofilms and can be, um, you know, can be something that is, is resistant to various things, but always having that extra layer of defense is going to be helpful. It's also helpful for preventing infections. It's helpful for um, preventing some food reactions and making us tolerate more stuff, right? So this is kind of one of the, the kind of hacks <laughs> that kind of gives people a little bit of an edge where they can start recovering a bit faster from the effects of a lot of stress in their bodies. Then I focus on um, utilizing adaptogens where people can utilize, there's a whole host of different herbs and all of them have like different personalities um, where these herbs can make us a bit more resilient to stress. Now, um, rhodiola is, is a great herb that I like because it's helpful for balancing the stress response. It's been shown to be effective for, for anxiety. It's been shown to be effective for depression. It also helps us grow new mitochondria, um, which, which mitochondrial dysfunction is oftentimes a part of the whole fatigue adrenal, um, adrenal presentation. And then I focus on B vitamins and vitamin C, which get depleted during a stress response. Oftentimes I'll try to like put that into one supplement formulation, but it's not right for everybody, right? Like, so I have a few options for people. Licorice is something that I really love. If you have low cortisol and low blood pressure, if you have high blood pressure, don't do it because it can raise your blood pressure even, even worse. Um, and then I focus on magnesium. So magnesium can be incredibly helpful. It's like a cofactor for hundreds of, 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 you know, um, biological systems in the body. So it's great when people are saying like, I have cramps, I'm anxious, I have trouble sleeping. Um, this is incredibly, incredibly helpful for so many people. And it gets super depleted when you're stressed out. And then I utilize electrolytes, 
where um, they have lots of vitamin C and D ribose. Electrolytes help us with recovery and people with adrenal dysfunction tend to have not enough electrolytes. Now, um, I use a powder. I don't use like Gatorade or anything with like junk in it, right? Um, and then the other thing is utilizing myo inositol, which is helpful for blood sugar balance. And this is something that many people um, have found to be very helpful for things like anxiety um, and even like OCD symptoms. So I just have this handful of supplements that people utilize. And of course, I not every supplement is right for everybody. So I go through and I have a section that talks about like the pros and cons of each supplement and which one you might, you might want, wish to utilize as part of your healing journey. All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you for, for sharing that. Yeah. I, I like adaptogens as well. And I yeah, definitely will reinforce what you said about the licorice root. If you have high blood pressure, you don't want to take licorice root. And uh, yeah. So last but not least, stress management. So, I mean, we, I, I probably should have brought this up before the supplements, but you know, I mean, again, I guess you, you, you mentioned the L-carnitine. I'm like, yeah, let's dive into the supplements. But then there were a few other things I wanted to mention, but you know, stress management, it's not all about taking supplements. Like you said, you admitted, you don't want to just give people, you know, a bunch of supplements to take. They, they do help to speed up the recovery process. And, you know, really in some cases can be, or really many cases could be beneficial for adrenal health. But if that's all you do is take supplements, it's not going to fix your adrenals. So you, you mentioned diet, like, you know, eat, getting sufficient protein and, and fats. And, you know, you just mentioned also like, you know, like the myo-inositol helping with blood sugar imbalances. So you definitely want to mini minimize sugar, which we didn't talk about as well, but, you know, that's important minimizing sugar. So I don't know if you want to talk about that as well, but I want, I guess if you could talk about, let's, let's, let's finish up by talking about sugar and stress management. So your, your thoughts on those two when it comes to adrenal health. Absolutely. So definitely most of us need to eat more protein and fat and probably less carbs than we think we need. Um, so carbohydrates, typically I, I don't recommend necessarily a keto diet for most people, but we really focus on whole food sources of carbohydrates. So we focus on proteins and fats and the, the diet template is very similar to like a paleo diet where we don't eat a ton of grains just because they can have an impact on blood sugar. Um, blood sugar imbalances are just part of like a notorious part of that adrenal dysfunction and people, you know, like they end up on this blood sugar roller coaster and they will end up, you know, feeling like anxious and tired and, um, just very, very like off when their blood sugar is out of balance and they can store, they end up storing fat instead of kind of burning it. And so we shift the nutritional um, safety signals to focus more on that protein fat and like lower carb intake to help people balance their blood sugar, right? So then people feel, they just feel more calm, more steady throughout the day. They don't get that 3 p.m. crash. They don't wake up at 3 a.m., <laughs> We're like, where am I? Who am I? Where am I so hungry? You know, that like 3 a.m. wake up is usually a person going hypoglycemic and then cortisol trying to like come in and save us, right? Um, and people get that cortisol surge at 3 a.m. So we really focus on like, how do you sleep better and how do you have more energy throughout the day? And that that's balancing your blood sugar. And so, yes, um, you know, candy, <laughs> We don't eat like candy. Um, I do have people drink orange juice first thing in the morning to help raise their glucose levels. Oftentimes glucose is low in the morning when we have low cortisol and then blood pressure is low, but we combine that with some protein. We combine that with some fat from um, coconut milk, and then we add some sea salt or electrolytes to that so that you kind of slow down the effect of like the, what I call like the blood sugar roller coaster where you you know, if you have orange juice by itself, it's like, ooh, woo, and you crash. Um, when you combine it with all of the different proteins and fats, you end up going like this, you know, where you have a much smoother ride throughout your day and you, you get the boost of glucose so that your blood sugar improves in the morning and you feel a little bit better. You have a little bit more energy, but you don't, um, you don't get the crash. Um, so that's part of the nutritional program. And 
you know, I'm so glad you asked about stress management because people, people are so willing to take supplements and people are so willing to change their diet. And then there's like free things you can do, like, you know, your stress, like adjust that. And people are like that. That's like the easiest and the hardest thing to do. Right. Um, so I talk a lot about, um, creating coping, coping mechanisms. Like we talked about the trigger toolkit. If somebody triggers you, how can you respond? Like, what can you do to soothe yourself? We talk about, um, creating the space for healing and figuring out what in your life is making you feel worse and what's making you feel better. Generally, we just try to focus on doing more of the things that make you feel better. And if there's a way to eliminate the things that make you feel worse um, or find a way to like not impact you so much, then that's going to be huge for the healing journey. All right. Well, wonderful. And is there anything else that I didn't ask you that I should have asked you or anything else that you, any final words, any, any last things that you want to chat about? You know, I just wanted to mention to people that if they are struggling with brain fog, fatigue and mood issues, anxiety, trouble sleeping, like you do not have to feel like this forever. And just because it's common doesn't mean that it's normal. Like a lot of people are stuck in this survival mode. And there's a very like targeted way to get out of that with sending your body these safety signals so that you can thrive and you could feel amazing and have lots of energy and sleep really well and have your brain work, right? And have and feel like strong and fit in your body and pain free. So I um, I hope that you'll you'll um, take the time to learn more about your health and thank you for joining us. And um, hopefully this was helpful on your healing journey. Yeah, I'm sure the listeners learned a lot and I'm sure they'll learn a lot more by reading your book. Again, Dr. Isabella Wentz's book, The Adrenal Transformation Protocol is the best place to get it on Amazon or your 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 website. Your website is thyroidpharmacist.com. Yeah, that's my website. Um, I have a free guide for people, thyroidpharmacist.com slash ABCs that talks about some of like the ABCs, like adrenals, um, B vitamins, vitamin C, and some of the stress management techniques. Um, and then my book is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and wherever books are sold. Okay, so thyroid pharmacist forward slash ABC, thyroidpharmacist.com forward slash ABCs is where they could get that guide. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. And yeah, and Amazon Barnes and Noble to get your book as well as your other three books. If you don't have her Hashimoto's books, you might as well just, just get the whole, just get all book, get all, all the books. But I guess for now, maybe train focus, since we're talking about adrenals, focus on Dr. Isabella's adrenal transformation protocol book. Um, but yeah, highly recommend, of course, her Hashimoto's book, all three of them, which I really do have, uh, you know, they're, they're wonderful. And I, I think I've even listened to, I don't know if I listened to all of them on audio. So that's also great. All of them are available on, on, right. I think all of them are on audio, audio book as well as your new adrenal transformation protocol will also be available on audible. Correct. Yes. Um, and actually I was, um, one strategy that I didn't mention. So for people who maybe like cleaning their house they find stressful or maybe driving in the car they find stressful consider like you listening to an audiobook when you're doing these tasks um and this can actually take the stress out of out of that like task right <laughs> um so um, that might be a fun way to to get all of your reading in and and not and and like not focus on the traffic or whatever is you know frustrating yeah, I agree. I, I do that all the time. I must admit, I listen to books these days more than I read them. I, re I read some too, but definitely knock out books quicker listening to them. So yeah, that's a great point. And again, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Isabella. I appreciate your, you taking the time and uh, again, excited about your book and definitely recommend, you know, like I said, all your books and, you know, look, look forward to not only reading, but listening to your, your new book. Cause I, I didn't tell you this, but I did pre-order it on, uh, as of recording this, it hasn't come out yet. So I pre-ordered it on, on, on Audible. So once it comes out, I'm definitely going to be listening to it while I work out and while I do my chores. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you so much for the wonderful work that you're doing to save thyroids. Really appreciate you. And thank you for having me on.